In this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how to frame a deck. So at this particular house, we've been working there for a year now. We built that sports court over to the right. They got a pool, and now this is what we've been doing. We did all the pavers, the fire pit, the walkway, and the final step is building them a deck. Stay tuned to learn how we did it. All right, day one. So the first thing we did was obviously start bringing some of our lumber back in the back. In this particular deck, we had to do three drop beams. So what that means is we're gonna use a triple two by 12 to support the deck. So the guys start taking off the old ledger board that was improperly installed against the house. And what I mean by that is they do not have a rim joist inside the house. So if you look close, as the guys are removing the ledger, you can see they actually installed it right over the siding, which is again, another no-no. So here I'm doing a little after showing what it looked like. So they do not have any plywood. It was simply just this insulation. And as you can see, there's holes everywhere. So what we ended up doing is removing all of it. We decided to install zip plywood we got a brand new J channel, brand new drip edge, and we actually installed a secondary drip edge along the bottom. And then we installed ice and water shield on top of that just for an extra layer of protection. Now you can see the camera zooming in on the siding. Unbeknownst to me, this is gonna matter later in the video. I'm just getting some B-roll right now, but you will see that that siding is gonna cause us more of a problem than I knew at this point. With the insulation removed, we start prepping everything. The guys in the red are obviously the siding company, and we are the ones installing the zip. So the siding company is working hand in hand with us. It worked out beautifully. Now they're installing the secondary drip edge along the bottom. So the theory behind that is even though we're not attaching to the house, if any water gets behind it, it's going to hit the drip edge and go down the concrete wall and not penetrate inside the house. So whenever building a deck out of pressure treated lumber, I can't stress this enough. Pressure treated lumber comes in various sizes. All of these boards are two by 10, but as you can see, like that one says half inch, that one says three eighths, half inch, five eighths. So they all vary. So when we're building the deck, we basically want to start with either all the biggest ones or the smallest ones and progressively go the opposite direction. Um, this will prevent waves when you're doing composite, having like a five ace next to a three ace. So whenever installing joist, you always want to check and see if it's crowning up or crowning down. You want to install it crown up. So the theory is if, if that's the board, eventually it will level out. If you have it cupped like that, it's only going to get worse. So you're going to have a big hole in your deck. So you, first thing you want to do is mark all your joists and crown them, and then that way, when you start flying them, you know exactly which ones you need to grab. It is the morning of day two. So we didn't get much done framing-wise because the majority of our time was spent doing all this. In the time lapse, you'll see that basically they don't have plywood and they don't have what's called a rim board that most houses do. They have web joists going across. So the insulation was all messed up. There was holes in it, everything like that. So what we decided to do was remove it. We got zip plywood and essentially installed all new plywood all the way around. Installed a new J channel on the bottom because this is aluminum siding. So a new J channel and now a drip edge. We used ice and water shield. And then if you look in the bottom, we have another drip edge. So basically, for whatever reason, if any water got in behind, it's just gonna go down the foundation wall. So now what we're gonna do today is work on the drop beam over here and then start laying our joists. So, or as we call them, flying joists. So um, yeah, yesterday we did, these are um, techno helical piles, six by six posts with two by, a triple two by 12 on top. Now, if you look over here, you can see this two by 12 is sticking past the walkway. 
we always run them long. And then once we put our joists on and square everything up, then we'll cut the excess off. It makes life a lot easier trying to do it that way than figure out. Also, if you look close on top, you can see that there's some variations in this wood. So what we're gonna also do is take our planer, plane the top of it, install um, zip tape. Um, you can use G-tape or any type of uh, joist protecting tape. And that what that does is it prevents the water from getting in between here because these are sandwiched together and creating rot in between where the joints are. So first order of business is we're gonna install the drop beams over here and then plane those, plane that, plane that, put the tape on and then we can start doing it. Now, because this is a freestanding deck, we're actually going to create everything sitting on top of it and then push it against. If this had a rim, if the house had a rim, the first thing we would do is attach the ledger and we wouldn't need any of these supports against the house. But because they don't have that, we need to do a freestanding deck, hence why we have all of these supports. So at your house, you might not need to do all of this. You might just need to have posts out here. Um, but in this particular case, that's what we have to do. That's what the engineer specs. So we gotta do what we gotta do. So we're gonna basically lay all the joists out and then um, nail the back of what would be the ledger or the rim and then slide it up against the house that way. So all the weight is actually on here opposed to when you do a ledger, it's actually adhered to the house and the weight lateral support is actually against the house. These are, as I said, techno metal posts. Um, at least in North America, they basically have uh, franchises all over the country um, that you can basically call them and they'll come install these. As a company, it is cheaper for us or less expensive for us to have them come install. They are expensive. They're like approximately three, $400 per post. But when you run a company and you need a guy to come out and basically dig a hole, depending upon the engineer spec, but in our area, usually whatever, 16 inches wide and three feet down, there's 16 of them on this job. So they would have to dig all of those. Then you need a call for your footing inspection. The inspector comes out, confirms that it's the proper depth. Then you need to come back and pour concrete. Then you gotta wait a day or two to let that set up. Then you can come back and install. With helical piles, there is no footing inspection. So basically they come in, drill their posts, and we can start framing on it same day. Now the other nice thing about it is they send you an engineer's report. So basically they know the torque and the specs that they need to hit to meet the engineer's specifications and they send that to you. So again, in a company's aspect, it's less expensive for us to have them come out, install them and have us frame rather than having multiple crews here, multiple days, um, pouring concrete and digging footers. Now. The other nice thing is, is they come with these six by six brackets. They also have flat ones and four by fours. They have all kinds of different top parts. Um, and all we do is drop our six by six into it, obviously make sure it's plumb. And then we put these GRKs now on top, um, depending upon what your engineer specs, this is one option. So this obviously gets nailed or screwed on the side here and then screwed on top. So the the two by 12 would sit here and then we would put four screws in it. Um, and then this one obviously goes on the other side and it basically sandwiches them together. Now, some engineers spec maybe one of these and then on the outside you get a two by six and have it come down here and come up to midway on the um, two by 12s and then you can GRK alleviating this. So again, it's all based on what your township requires, what your engineer requires, and um, what is your local code. So in this particular case, um, as you can see, we're using these metal brackets, um, but again, definitely refer to what your architect and township requires. 
All right, now we're doing the drop beam along the house. So if you watch closely, you can see all of our seams line up in the middle of the six by sixes. This is imperative. You cannot have any seams between the six by sixes. They must stop in the middle of the six by sixes. Now I'm coming by with the planer, planing the top of all the beams, and then we're gonna install our flashing tape. As you can see, the drop beams are done. All of our connections are done. And what we're doing is we're putting flashing tape. Um, this is zip tape. This is pro wood. It's really irrelevant which one you use. Um, G tape, any of them are good. Basically what we're trying to do, like I said earlier in the video, is we're trying to prevent any moisture or water getting in these cracks or sitting on top of this. Um, this will help preserve the wood because obviously the water will roll off, go down, and uh, prolong its life. So, as you can see, the guys are rolling it. So you install it, you roll it, and then uh, repeat the process. And before you know it, we're going to start flying some joists. Um, so ideally, I would like to always start here and work our way that way, but obviously um, my access point's behind us, so we're going to start down there and work our way this way. All right, now we're finally installing some joists. So what I did was, if you want to call it a ledger or a rim, I'm resting that temporarily on the drop beam. If you look at me in the back, I'm nailing from the back into the joists. I have two guys carrying them because they're... 2 by 10 by 20 foot long, so they're pretty heavy. So what we're going to do right here is slide it into the house. And this is where we notice that there's a problem. That's why we're all standing around trying to think of a solution. All right, day three. So the issue we ran into was there's a door here and a door there. The bottom of that door and the bottom of that door are level, but the siding is not. So if you look, you can see how it sticks down about an inch there. But over here, it's flush. So when I was using the laser doing my transit, the deck board fits perfectly underneath that door. The problem is, is my drop beam is level, and obviously the joists are level. When it carries over there, basically the siding is going down on an angle and meets over here. So I got the siding guys over here. They're gonna cut the bottom of the siding and then reinstall the J channel an inch up higher so that way we can slide the deck board underneath. And then if you look up, you can see that the siding is two separate colors. So I don't know if this was a repair job or if they just painted it, but whoever installed the siding did not do a very good job so the siding right here is fine and right there, but they're still going to have to take the J-channel off of that, cut the bottom of that siding so it runs parallel, and then we'll be good to go to keep going. But what's nice is this is a freestanding deck, so we just slid the deck out. They're going to redo it, and then uh, we'll be good to go. With the siding fix, we make quick work of the other part of the deck. So we're going to put all of our joists in, we're going to do the last two, and I'm going to show you how to install flat blocking. I'm going to show you the oldest trick in the book. Right here we have to do some blocking. So there's two types. You basically can do ladder blocking, which means you're just going to put in like that, or flat blocking, which we prefer. So the way you do flat blocking is you take some scraps and screw it on top, so this is a two by 12, this is a bit excessive, but it's what we have. So you take a couple screws, screw it down in top. And then on the end here,
And basically what this allows you to do is keep your flat blocking flush with your joist and it also allows you the ability to move it. In this camera view, you're gonna see the pressure treated touch an aluminum. You cannot have that. Eventually the pressure treated will eat the aluminum. So what you need to do is add flashing tape. We flash tape all of our joists and flat blocking, so we're good to go. And then you just come in with your nail gun and nail away. Let's start up here. And sometimes there's a little bit, so you can just lift this up. We almost exclusively use cordless pass load nailers, but in this case, because we had so much framing, I opted to use my Max High Pressure Nail Gun. This is a very expensive nail gun with an air compressor, but it is worth every penny. If you're going to do a lot of framing, I highly recommend it. And you can get this Max Nailer at Acme Tools. Alright, once it's nailed in, take your screws out. Blow it off, put your flashing tape on, and you're good to go. Because traditional lumber only comes 20 foot and this deck is 24 feet, I'm cutting the excess off of the middle joist so that I can install new ones for where the stairs are going to go. And now I'll show you how to square up a deck. With our flat blocking installed, that allows these joists to be as straight as they're going to get. Once that's done, now it's time to square it up. So we're going to use the Pythagorean Theorem. So from the corner of the deck to the right, I measure 16 feet. From the corner of the deck out to here, I measured 12 feet. Then you take a tape measure and do the diagonal and I got 20 feet. That tells me we're square. Then what I do is I take my Martinez square and transfer that line straight down. This is going to get cut off and we're going to move this out of the way. Cut this off. Once this is off, we're going to slide this back and attach this and do our hurricane clips. And then off of this square, we're going to go all the way down. All right, with our deck squared up, now we can start installing the blocking. I'm also going to snap a line at 18 feet and cut off all the additional lumber to install our rim joists. Because there's a 45, it gets a little bit complicated here, so we cut all those at 45 and going to install the rim joists. All right, now with the top framing done, it is time to start installing hardware. So I'm using a pass load positive placement metal connecting nailer. And what this does is this allows me to install these hurricane clips on the drop beam without having to hammer or screw anything. It makes quick work of it. So if you use a drop beam, you have to install these hurricane clips. There's two different types. I prefer the one that I'm installing, but there's at least a less expensive option of a straight one. Either one works. Just check what your architect or engineer specs and make sure it's approved by the township. And now I'm coming on the back side doing the same exact thing. So again, any drop beam you install, you have to install these hurricane clips. They prevent uplift and kind of help tie everything together. Because we did this drop beam, as you can see, there's no joist hangers. So code stipulates if it's freestanding, you must have joist hangers here. But because we have the drop beam and it only cantilevers over two feet, we do not have to have joist hangers. But again, if you attach to the house, you must 
have joist hangers. So all of these blocks are called blocking and they go over the dropping. Now, if you look close, you can see that these are actually down about an inch and a half, inch and five eighths. Because what we're gonna do is, here's the door. So we're gonna actually do a porcelain inlay, this whole center part. So we recess the blocking down an inch and a half so that we can put our grates in. Um, but if you're not doing an inlay, um, this is what the blocking typically looks like. It's flush with the joists. Now over here, because of this angling like that, we actually had to add a second beam right there to pick up the load of those couple joists. So um, again, typically you just attach to the house. You wouldn't have this beam, you wouldn't have that beam. Now, as we work our way around, all of this blocking is what we call mid-span blocking. So it's eight feet and right down the middle. Um, but we prefer flat blocking and this is simply because we're gonna do a double picture frame. So we want the ability to have a board go this way and then when these boards come this way, have something to screw it down to. Um, again, total personal preference. But as we work our way around, now we have another beam out here. And again, all of this blocking is down and it carries all the way over. And then over here, we have our last drop beam. Over there. Now, um, because we did this on a 45, the engineer spec'd a double rim. And of course you can't see it, but it goes under that zip and sits on top. So it sits over there, comes across, sits on top of this beam right there, and then cantilevers over. Um, and because these joists are extended past two feet, we had to use these 45 um, joist hangers. But again, as you can see, there's no joist hangers over here because again, because we're cantilevered over two feet, we do not need them. Now, this looks a little funky, but the way we do stairs are, um, so essentially there's four boards, one, two, three, four, that actually go vertical. And the reason for that is, as you can see, we have double blocking there. So when our stairs come up, our last step is actually the deck. So when you step off of the deck, you're gonna drop down whatever it's gonna be, let's say seven inches, so when we do our stringers for the stairs, we need something to attach it to. So as you can see, there's the drop beam in the middle, but then uh, we reinforce that with GRKs, and uh, that's why this is all beefed up like that. But this is uh, basically how we frame a deck. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Make sure you stay tuned for when we start putting the deck boards on.